Welcome everyone to Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Star Trek The Next Generation Season 7, Episode 3. It is called Interface. So, spoilers for the episode. This episode is about two things, really. There's the science fiction part, which is Jordy is piloting a probe. It's not a, like a ship, it's like a, a humanoid probe that he put, goes on into like a like a sensory suit and he can like feel and see and everything from what this whatever the probe's seeing um what we actually see when we're watching it is like jordy himself walking around like the it's just like a, almost like they've built an android that looks like him but i don't think that's actually the, what they're saying he no. looks like on location no it's not even that humanoid we see one glimpse of it in the reflection you know where he sees himself oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah you're right you're right and it's just like a like a cylinder sort of thing with yeah. arms but he, he, obviously, he's controlling it, he's feeling things and all the rest of it. So that's kind of the, and they're investigating this ship that's become trapped in a, a gas giant. So they're like, oh, maybe the crew's alive, maybe they're dead, whatever. But they're in the gas giant and they're doing that. But meanwhile, also Geordi focused is that the mother, sorry, the ship that Geordi's mother is on, uh, she's a captain in Starfleet, has went missing. So there's this kind of cloud lingering over the episode that, his mother might be lost and possibly dead for good. Uh, it doesn't sound like good news. So those are the two things that the episode's really playing with. So it's all very Jordy centric uh, What did you make of Interface? I like the ideas of it more than I enjoyed watching it. I think it's the sort of episode I could sound fairly positive talking about what it does functionally on a surface level mm. and like, you know, what its, what its goals are, what the point of its story is, you know, the, the beats that it's playing. But when actually watching it, I think it it's not actually that enjoyable. Yeah, the concepts are better than the. And I won't even say the execution's bad per se. I don't like. I don't know if there's yeah. anything I'd recognise with it that, that are that is glaringly wrong. It's just it's kind of dull. It's a little bit dull, but the concepts are really interesting. The idea of exploring a dangerous location with a with a probe that is controlled as if someone's in vr like moving things around they can actually feel and see what the probe's seeing like that that's kind of interesting um even the idea that he's going to you know eventually in the episode think he's seeing his dead mother or well she may not be dead but don't i mean technically this episode the way it ends like they could find her ship later in the season that this could be something they come back to later on she, she, they're just missing they're just missing in action yes it definitely plays it though as if she's dead and he has to accept that by the end yeah yeah uh there is definitely some time though where you're thinking wait is his mother somehow down there <laughs> yeah somewhere? it's it's vague and sketchy enough on the details that it's just about possible on, he, on a show like this he gives up like an explanation as to how they might have ended up there and it's like okay are you just try to convince yourself or are we actually heading in that direction and the, everyone's going to feel bad because they didn't believe you and sent you to a therapy session with Troy <laughs> instead of like, listening to what you were saying about seeing your dead mother. Yeah, so, you know, like, like the concepts are, are, are solid. And even the idea, because there's some moments in here I really like, particularly once Jordy has the news and everyone's like, hey, do you want to just take this thing off and not do it? And Riker's volunteering to man the probe instead. Jordy's like, yeah, but it's not calibrated for you. That'll take ages. And if you just do it without calibrating, It'll be kind of wonky. You won't feel things the same way. It won't work as well. I should do this. And then he sees this, you know, he thinks his dead mother who talks to him. And he's like, well, I don't think she's really on this ship because no one could survive being on that ship. But he thinks her ship is deeper into the planet and they're beaming some kind of signal to the ship. It's like the only thing they can do. And it's like, okay, okay. Like, this all seems fine. And then Picard's like, Jordy, go and speak to Troy. <laughs> You're not well. The right decision. Oh, no. It's, for it's, the captain to make. Sensible decision. Um, I, I, you know, I did feel some heartfelt moments, though, between Jordy and Data. Data kind of trying to console him in his own awkward way, uh, where Jordy denies that he wants consoled, and then has to admit later when Data gives up that Data's given up too easy. And he's like, no, I do want consoled. I just need you to force it more. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I can't admit that I want it. Um, and then they are intentionally agreeing to break the rules because it's either help Jordy go, go back down when he's not supposed to on the probe or 
like basically in prison jordy because he might do something that he's not supposed to and data makes a choice kind of a friendship to just help him instead uh, and i thought that was a good moment it felt like a like it felt like data was making a choice that was based on friendship and not any kind of logic or any kind of you know it felt like a really important moment for data in that sense it is i think it's 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 nice the way it's tied up in logic right in in that data like justifies it as like, well if i let you go you're just going to go and do it anyway and you're going to hurt yourself so it's better if i'm there and help you to make sure everything's safe yeah, I guess in the same way that as Jordy just making up a series of like threads that explain why his mother could be down there, he's just trying to convince himself that it's possible rather than yeah, you know what, what's what's true of it. But in this, but in this case, it's more sweet because it's him just justifying to himself why he should help his friend. You know, he's coming up with a reason for it. So, I mean that that's all fine. Like they're them exploring the because they do a thing with the open where it's just Jordy going around and there's some fire and stuff. And it turns out they're doing their first test of this this probe in its suit. So at one point, Jordy's leg just stops moving. He's like, "Hey, I can't move my leg anymore," uh, and they have to like fix it. So you got Crusher there and Riker, and they're hitting buttons and calibrating yeah. things and all sorts. He, he's like overly calibrated, so he can like feel the flames when he shouldn't be able to. And yeah, stuff like that. he ends up burning his hands actually uh, the yeah. second time he he uses the probe. So yeah, and it's it's justified in a reason that kind of makes sense because it's just tricking his brain basically. Mm. Not sure why there's a physical burn as opposed to him feel like I can understand if it told me he felt the pain. Yeah, yeah, I think they tried to kind of explain it. He, they said uh, like, it's like a feedback; it heats up, right? Yeah, it was a feedback loop because like something they were doing to block it was sort of bouncing off his intense emotion like reaction to yeah. it, and it was it eventually just erupted basically in the so. I, yeah, well, I mean, I can, I can go with it. I, I, can, I can yeah, live with that. Uh, but, you know, I, I appreciate, again, at the end, uh, after this all goes down, and Jordy, of course, when he's talking... Because I, I kind of got where it was going to a point. I mean, I couldn't have been too specific, because, you know, some of, you couldn't predict some of these details. The, but, the idea that it was something pretending to be his mother. Yeah, well, more, more specifically, that it was something that was pulling stuff from Jordy's mind in showing that to him because everything she said that kind of confirmed what Jordy had been speculating i was like well that sounds like it's just saying everything you've said because that's what you've said not because pretty much bang on here yeah. yeah so it turns out to be a, a species a life form of some kind that lives in the gas giant it, is, it looks like a fire cloud when it's moving around when you see it briefly and it basically got trapped on this ship it tried to communicate with the crew and unintentionally ended up killing the crew because they just couldn't take it. But it's not killing Jordy because it's not really Jordy. It's kind of going through the, the probe. It's this, you know, sort of like a buffer. So he's able to actually talk to it successfully. So he helps them by putting the ship further back down into the atmosphere. If, if you could even call it an atmosphere on a gas giant, I'm not sure if you would. But uh, and that, would. That, that saves the this alien species. But what I liked about all this, though, is afterwards, when Picard's telling him off, it's like, look, you disobeyed an order. I have to write this up, right? I love that he gives him the stern talking to as a captain, but then once that's over, there's like a, the personal side comes out, and it's like, but I also completely understand why you felt you need to do this, and I'm sorry that you didn't, like, find your mother down there. Like, I actually, I appreciate it, because it was like, as a captain, he has to do one thing, but as his friend, he then kind of wants to you know everyone understands why he really cared and why he really did push this beyond what he should have done yeah we had a like a similar thing in terms of you know picard being the, the stern captain but then also like you know doing the captain thing but then also you know, being the friend we had a, a thing with with crusher not too long ago yeah yeah uh, also which uh, was digging into the other what about office. Worf when he didn't show up to his duty that one time and then picard's like mm -hmm. look you need some you, you clearly need to go deal with your personal issues go and yeah <laughs> yeah the thing that was that's kind of along the same lines as well so uh it's just that, that sort of stuff is nice to see we're so ingrained with these characters at this point that yeah them sort of like showing the parts of their friendship and stuff is is nice um and the joy i think actually is what maybe drags it down a little bit is that all of the stuff with jordy actually reacting to his mother's disappearance and talking to his dad in the therapy session with troy all of it is kind of cookie cutter in the sense it's just oh I had a chance to see her like a year ago and I chose not to take it. So now I kind of regret that. 
Oh, she sent me this message three weeks ago. I never responded to it. It's all kind of like by the numbers stuff of regret of a loved one dying. It is, and like it's it's a double edged sword because in in some respects it works that we've never really spent any time talking about Jordy's parents. Mm. Right, there is no real previous relationship on the show to draw on, which works in the sense of well, it shows that he did always kind of put it off and it was a bit distant and and you know could have heightened this feeling here now. But on the other side, it gives, as a viewer, it's a bit of a disconnect of, well, well it's hard to care now. Because you, we, while we understand why Geordie's caring now, it's hard for us to get as invested as maybe on some other uh, relationships we've had over the show. Yeah, it's not a big loss to us. Like, obviously, they, they try and show us the uh, the message she left for him. But by this point, you know, she's already, like, reported missing this. I mean, I do think the way they handle it at the start is good. The way the way Picard gets the message, and they don't tell the audience why this is important, that the ships went missing. And Picard goes to see Jordy and says, you know, Lieutenant Data, I need to speak to Jordy alone. And they, and I think you, and if you didn't, I mean, I think we vaguely knew from the description from last time, or maybe we didn't, I can't remember. But I think at that moment I got, oh, one of his parents is on that ship. I actually thought both his parents were on that ship until he specifically said mm. mother. Um, you just sort of get it. Oh, this is someone telling someone else that their loved one may be dead. I, I do like the way this this comes through, like almost through the grapevine, right? Just like, oh, one of the captains like, hey, by the way, I know you've got an officer serving there that might, might want to hear about this before there's a public announcement. They might, they might appreciate a heads up. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that, that kind of level of just... We, we we always see all you know the 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 other Starfleet people outside of our ship often is is portrayed as just yeah you know, they're really negative you know they're always getting in the way. Whereas it shows there is a lot of camaraderie between the captains as well. Yeah, this was clearly someone that Picard liked talking to. This was a friendly captain. <laughs> yeah, it's, so. it's just nice to see some of that occasionally. Or Admiral, I can't remember what rank he was, but I don't know if it mattered. Uh, yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, well, I don't think it really matters ultimately, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so I. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's the more just by the number stuff with him being sad. Like all the things, I guess I was waiting for its unique hook as far as his grief. Like you know, every because they all kind of present themselves in the same way. I'll take the therapy scene for example, where she's kind of poking at him with questions and he's kind of talking about things, and then eventually she go, you know, he's talking about how I had this chance to see her, and Troy jumps in and says, "And now you regret that you didn't, you know, take that was your last chance to go see her," and. I kind of kept, you know, there was a scene with Riker as well where Riker was trying to talk to him about him getting over his own mother's death, stuff like that. And I kept waiting for something kind of unique to Jordy's relationship with his mother that would feel, okay, this makes me feel a little bit more unique, this detail. This, so it's just something between them that felt like something. And, and it's, it's, they never gave me that. I, I never got, you know, the, the real connection between them, I guess. Right, and because the, the episode doesn't sell you on that, it makes you really hard to feel anything about this, you know, this potential death. And, you know, you know we have, okay, Jordy is there, he's acting, he's, he's, he's sad and moping around or, or trying not to, right? That's kind of the point. But it just, it's just there for us. You know, it, it doesn't feel like there is any sort of real, you know, real depth to it to make us care. And that's kind of why this episode, on paper, you know, you can talk about it, it, it could sound great. But because that depth, that emotional depth, just isn't there, it just kind of ends up being kind of dull. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure, other than just sort of rating something more specific about him and his mother, I think the alternate approach that may have made it work would be to give me less of people talking to him about his mother and have it be more internalized so that it's just kind of like, we see it starting to seep through the cracks in his performance, perhaps? Think, like maybe some moments of him lashing out in denial a bit mm. more like because he's very composed for most of the episode and yeah uh, it's very clear this is his way of you know coping pretending it's not happening but maybe if just some of that d does crack occasionally and you you get some of the, those moments where he lashes out you know uh, some of his friends you know things like that might have made it hit a little bit harder yeah or as silly as this sounds, maybe like a tear comes out from under the visor, or, or maybe he takes his visor off for a moment to wipe his eyes, or I don't know. <laughs> like, so, so, like maybe when he realizes that this ghost, or not ghost, but you know, that this mother ship on the figure isn't 
That's mother figure on the ship, I meant to say there. Not mothership on the figure. That's a very different thing. Uh, maybe when he realized that that wasn't actually his mother, maybe that's a moment where, oh, he has to realize that, okay, she's not down there, she's still just missing, and there's nothing he can do about it. Maybe that moment should have felt like a bigger, like, thud to him. Yeah, it's it's conflicting, because obviously he jumps straight into, okay, well, I need to save these life forms mode, which, again, on, on some level, I can appreciate that's that's him yeah. doing his, his job, and that's what he should be doing, right, is, as you know, as a good Starfleet officer, being like, hey, no, the, the, the you know, personal feelings aside, this is still a life form that needs help. I mean, maybe this suggestion is really generic in a way, but, like, I think it probably would work better is that, let's say, maybe Data would be the most impactful. Let's say the scene with Data, he keeps denying that he's got something he wants to talk about. He doesn't, you know, he, maybe maybe instead of the way the scene went, he instead resists and doesn't tell him anything and keeps it in. Maybe the final scene of the episode, instead of the scene with Picard, even though I liked it, like, a scene where he goes back to Data and maybe it does just become more vulnerable. Uh, I wouldn't say quite breaks down, but, you know, in a way that he just needs Data to be a friend, in a way that Data was offering earlier. That that, that would show an, a, you know, a difference be yeah. from before and after. Maybe if he goes back and be like, do you know what, I do want to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as opposed to doing it all in that one scene. You know, you're right, that, that, that definitely would have helped. I think it, so. It, there's a possibility it might have been a little... You know, too little, too late at that point of the episode. Maybe, yeah. But, um, you know, if, it, it might have still ended stronger you know, than it did. Not that it, you know, I mean, the ending was probably still his best point. But if you end even stronger, that might have, you know, you, you look back on it a little bit more favorably. Yeah. As it is, it's kind of middling, I guess, is it overall. Yeah. Like, there's, there's nothing about it that's really terrible. No, no, there's nothing laughably bad or are like super frustrating other than just the general sense of oh this could be probably quite a bit better with some tweaks to how they handle it but yeah yeah it just it just needed i don't want to say another pass through it just it just needed depth adding to it that i, I don't know who wrote this one but I, I don't know maybe they're in a rush but maybe they're just not capable of this story right maybe this wasn't the right story for them to be writing mm. yeah Oh well, there you go. That is our thoughts on this Star Trek. Um, next time, of course, we'll be back to Deep Space Nine, but when we do return to the next generation, we'll be looking at Gambit Part 1. So, here's a description. <laughs> this was a, a trip when I looked over it this year. A two-part well, already. While investigating the apparent death of Captain Picard, <laughs> Riker is abducted by a group of intergalactic archaeological thieves only to find that Picard has apparently joined their ranks. Well, this one sounds like it's got a lot going on. <laughs> the real question is, will it feature Picard's not-girlfriend, the archaeological... Oh, uh, Vash? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, That's... given that it's called Gambit, I have to assume Picard's went undercover to try and solve something. Like, this is a big Gambit that he's playing, you know? Yeah. But it but, has to be, like, if Riker doesn't know, it has to be a personal thing for him, right? Not a, Yeah, maybe, or maybe... I mean, it could be a Starfleet thing, potentially. Or, yeah, it's, like, super top secret, and, like, his crew knowing would jeopardize what, what he's trying to accomplish, so it's it's full-on, only he knows, you know? Yeah. So, this, message will, this message will self-destruct in five seconds yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it sounds at least like a wacky concept for an episode. It's, it's how, how's he faking his own death with no one knowing? Well, that's what I want to know. Who's in on it? Someone's got to be in on it. Crusher? Crusher makes the most sense, because she would be like, oh yeah, I can, I've confirmed that he's dead. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. It depends where he's supposed to have died. Maybe they're on like a space station or something, so they've got like a, a space oh, station no, doctor. Th th there's no body. Yeah, no body. One of those yeah. scenarios. Oh, Brian Lynch is in the next episode. Oh. Okay. Oh, sorry, not Brian. Sorry, uh, his, his name in the show is Baron. Uh, Richard Lynch is the name, sorry. Richard Lynch. Okay. You don't know who that is. I understand. But uh, let's just say he's popped up in a lot of uh, notorious uh, B-movies and mystery science theory episodes. I'm going to recognize his face. I don't know if you will. I don't know if you've seen him in anything. He's in... Oh, fuck that. Well, this is what he's one of these actors that's done like 500 movies to be honest. Uh, okay, I must have seen him somewhere. I've, I've seen a reasonable amount of B movies. Wait, he's in the Halloween remake? I did not know that, but 
Oh, well, there you go. I've seen him in something. I'll, I'll, t- I'll take your word for it. Uh, but he, he's in a mystery science theater movie called Werewolf. He's in... Uh, I want to say he's in a Chuck Norris movie called Invasion USA. Uh, he's definitely been in some other stuff. But like, Is he one of the people chanting Evil Dies Tonight? No, no, no. Halloween remake, not Halloween... Oh, okay. This you is the Rob Zombie one. Halloween the remake. Rob Zom- oh. Unfortunately, I've seen that as well. Yeah, Halloween 2018, well, one isn't a remake, but it's the second one after that that does the that, Evil Dice. That's true, it's not a remake. Is that the second one? Yeah, it's Halloween uh, Kills. It's got the chanting. Oh, shit, yeah, it is. Yeah. I know these things. Oh, he's in Puppet Master 3. I've seen that, too. He's in Trancers 2. I've seen that. He's an alligator too. That's the last thing I saw him in. We, we did that as a bonus episode on the Ace. So you can sort of tell the caliber of movie yeah. that he keeps popping up in. Is that indicative of the quality of the next episode, do you think? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. <laughs> that is a fantastic question that I cannot in any way answer. But anyway, that's next time on our Star Trek reviews. So thank you very much for joining us. You can support us, of course, over at patreon.com slash TV. Get some bonuses for your trouble. There's bonuses for all the movie podcasts, and there's a TV bonus now. I'm monthly reviewing Columbo as a Patreon-only thing, so go check that out. Thank you very much for joining, everyone. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, and keep watching Star Trek. I'm forgetting I'm doing Star Trek. Keep watching Star Trek, and somewhere out there, Wesley Crusher is missing.